So carrying on with more of our angle rules, uh, we'll get to triangles. And I'm hoping some of these are familiar to you from the years before. Um, so angles on a triangle will add up to 180 degrees. So in this problem here, we've got a 90 degree angle, uh, 21 there, and we know what x is going to be if we go x is equal to 180 minus 90 minus 21. You should get 69 degrees. And our reason there, as an abbreviation, you can say angle sum of triangle is 180. There's another example here. Um, taking a look at what we've got, we can see again it's a right angle triangle. I'm looking for x and y. Helpful strategy here uh, is think about covering up part of the diagram. So if I ignore everything in blue, you might notice that you have angles on a straight line. And so angles on a straight line add to 180. So I'll go for x first. So x is equal to 180 minus 150. It's equal to 30 degrees, and my reason for it would be angle on straight line equal 180. Once I've got that, I can think about the rest of the diagram. And sometimes, it's, again, it's helpful to write down what you've found so far into the diagram. So 30 degrees for x. I know that y, then, is going to be 180 minus 90 minus, oops, minus 90 minus 30 and this will give us 60 degrees. And we can do that because we know angles in a triangle. I'll abbreviate there, angles in triangle equal 180. Now there's another rule that you could use here on this particular one if you wanted, and that's um, the situation here, that if I have this angle out here, it is going to be equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles. So that's another way to look at this. If I was going to be solving for this one, we could say that um, y is equal to 150 minus 90 is equal to 60 degrees, and exterior angle on triangle equal to some interior. opposite interior angles. So I don't often teach that rule explicitly because most people just see it the other way around, but it does exist if you do want to use it. Um, so the next rule we'll look at is the exterior angle. Oh, that's exactly what the rule is. I'm getting there. So here what I just talked about, we've got our exterior angle x and it's going to add to the two interior angles to be the same. So in this case, x is going to be equal to 60 plus 70 is equal to 130 degrees. And here again, we know that x plus 58, the two interior angles, should be equal to the exterior angle. So in this case, x is equal to 129 minus 58 degrees. And you get 71 degrees. And you've got your reasons there. Exterior angle of a triangle equal to the sum of the interior opposite angles. So it doesn't matter if you do this one above as using the exterior angle rule, or if you think about it as angles on a straight line and then angles add to 180 in a triangle first. Next thing we'll look at is isosceles triangles, and I'm hoping you remember that with an isosceles triangles, with an isosceles triangle, um, two of the sides of the triangle are the same length, and it's often shown by little hash marks inside the triangle to indicate that they're the same length. Sometimes it's double hashes, sometimes it's single hashes, like we see over there. But um, when you draw and kind of think about visualizing those two angles that are the same, their base angle is going to also be the same size. So in this particular situation, 71 and x are going to be the exact same because of what we call isos triangle base angle equal. Um, and this one sometimes gets confused by people a little bit. They're not sure which angles to pick. But if you notice, um, 71, if I color these sides different colors because they're different lengths. So the two yellow sides have the same length. And the green side is obviously a different length. And the angle 71 goes between a green and yellow side. And x also goes between a green and a yellow side. So they're using similar portions in the triangle. Up here at the top, 
this angle is going between the two yellow sides, so it's going to be different. It's not made up by the same sides, so it'll have a different angle. And you could use angles in a triangle, um, add to 180 to use that one, or to find that one. Um, and we do often use that, as you can see here in the next example, uh, kind of combining together the two rules, isosceles triangle and angle sum equal 180. So here, I know I've got 61, and again if you think about coloring in those arms, the two angles at the end of those arms, I also sometimes think about putting like hands out here, because the angles are reaching out. If you think about that, this should be 61. So you know that the angle sum inside the triangle should be 180 minus 61 minus 61 and that'll get us x, so in this case x is equal to 58. So I'm kind of using that base angles equal idea to get this missing angle first before I find the angle at the top. And another way to look at this is kind of thinking about it from the other point of view. Here you can see that I've got the angle that's not at the base angles. Um, so it is, in fact, between the two equal sides, and it is 80. And what I know is that inside the triangle I have to get to 180, so x in this case will be equal to 180 minus 80, which gets us 100 degrees, but we have to divide the whole thing by 2, because we have to split it evenly between the two, because those two angles will be the exact same. So I'm going to subtract off that individual top angle there, and then divide it by 2, so I'll get x is equal to 50. And again, your reasoning would be isosceles base angles equal, or isosceles triangle sum to 180. Anything to communicate there that you're dealing with on isosceles, then you know there's 180 degrees in a triangle. One more example here, um, just to take a peek at. We've got uh, an isosceles triangle here. And then we also have a second isosceles triangle over here. And you can see that they share the same side lengths, but they do not share the same angles, obviously. So I need to think about what are my base angles for triangle ABD. So if I think about coloring in those sides that are the same length, let's take a look. My base angle of 50, because it's at the end of one of those sides, means that this angle over here should also be 50. So if I was going to solve this, I could say angle ADB meaning angle A, D, B is equal to 50, 15, sorry, 50, isos triangle equal. And then what I might think about doing is angles on a straight line to get me this one, so angle B, D, C is equal to 180 minus 50 is equal to 130, angle on straight line. 180. And then lastly, if I know that this is 130 here, I still have an isosceles triangle on this side. So in, in this case, will be 180 uh, minus the 130, which leaves me with 50 degrees total inside of that triangle I've got to use up, and I know half of it need to go up here, and the other half of it need to go down there. So I'm going to divide by 2 equals 25. And again, that's um, triangle isosceles um, angle equal 180 in triangle. So any sort of abbreviations there will work. Um, your last rule for triangles would just be equilateral triangle. Um, in an equilateral triangle, all the angles add up to, or all the angles are 60 degrees because you've got 180 degrees total and you've got to split it fairly between those three different sides. So that's just 180 divided by 3. And that's the same for any equilateral triangle.